Hey there guys, this is me, Melorian, and it's time for another War Machine Battle Report. You know guys, I, I really did plan to be doing more of these, but it seems like every single time I was pumped and ready, I just didn't get a game that week, or when I played someone, they were completely unpainted and or had proxies, and it just didn't really work out. And finally, this time, I had a, a list that I really want to show off. I'm up against something that's pretty much all painted and no proxies. So hooray, let's go and try and do this one here. So I've been playing around with a lot of different Magnus II lists, especially for the Jack builds, uh, ever since the Nomads crazily went up a point so that now they're useless compared to, to Tauros. Well, yeah, all those Nomads are on my shelf collecting dust and here are all the Tauros. So I got four of them in the list and as well, one of the ones that got a big improvement were the mules. They went down a point, they got longer range. They are very interesting now. So I'm going to run two of them. Uh, along with this, I have Anastasia off the board. I have some Eliminators uh, to make sure I can really punch into their lines. I have Regman. I also have Ian and Holt. And then I also have Alton Ashley and or Midwinter and also the Tinker. Now, because I'm in Regulars, I get to have an advanced move with one heavy for every unit I have. And so you can see here with my two units, I advanced move three. That's a, a, that's me slapping my hand. That's that sound you just heard. Uh, because in the previous version, I was running three units. And so this is what I do. And then I forgot that I couldn't change this up. So imagine only the two mules went up. They're the ones that really need to go up to really say like, hey, you can go up there, but I'm going to blast your face. Uh, that Toro, the fact that it advanced move, spoiler alert, won't actually really matter. Now I'm up against Daryl on the other side with his circle, and this is good old Iona with all the things are gonna really smash you. He has all the Tharn Ravagers, and they're gonna hit really hard. There's everybody's favorite Lore of the Feast there right in the middle, and he also has a, a unit of Blood Witches or whatever off on the ambushing side as well. So I've had limited experience playing against Iona. There's just not a lot of circle players in town. What can I say? It just, you don't see them very often. So I know in the past I haven't done well. I'm hoping now that I'll have the tools to smash them, but hey, we'll see what happens. So even though I had the plus one, he went first. It happens. Uh, he basically runs up. He has the surefoot on the unit of Ravengers on the right, so the plus two defense and also can't be knocked down. And then also on the left side there, Phantasm on that super two-man wrecking crew. I always forgot what the unit's actually called. They're really normally called just I lose a jack every time they charge. Uh, by the way, they've prayed my leftmost jack, and it just won't happen because I'm going to hide that thing forever. Uh, the good news for him, though, is that normally they can smash any jack they come into, even if it's not prayed. So what are you going to do? Uh, Lore of the Feast, I believe, has already been given all the corpses he needs, so he's all scary. And uh, yeah, at this point here, you know, he has moved up so I can take some shots. At first I was like, ooh boy, I can't shoot the Wrecking Ball, but Phantasm, he has specifically set that up so that I can't get a shot off. So I can get a shot off on the one on the right. And yes, I do know that that will trigger the Vengeance, but I don't really care because if he was to go suddenly vengeance up and run into my lines that's kind of perfect i'd love to kind of be able to get a big jump into them and try and kill them in my own side uh and then hopefully locking away everything else so we'll kind of play around with that so on my turn that's really what i do i'm going to be going up there and the little base that you can see there in the, the middle of my lines that's me carefully measuring if lord of the feast was a shoot a jack and place himself where is Magnus safe? So Magnus is a lot further back because I'm playing this a little bit defensively. Maybe too defensively, but uh, yeah, that's what I'm going to try and do here. Otherwise, the mule on the right is able to kill one of the Ravengers on the right. Hey, I gave them vengeance, but I more care. There's less of them on the table. And otherwise, what I've done is for spells, I've, I've escorted up. I have Bullet Dodger onto one of the Eliminators. Defense 19. Really, really nice. And then the other mule went and shot for the Winter Argus in the middle and missed. So what are you going to do? So on his turn, he does get the vengeance, but he doesn't really go for it. He feels it's better to wait, which I totally agree with, and uh, doesn't really actually do too much at all. I mean, his little wrecking ball team move on the left side because, hey, they can see through forest because why not? And uh, yeah, otherwise playing it pretty safe. Now, 
I feel this is the right turn for me to go in there and do tons of work. Now, that unit in the forest, I know they got high defense, I know they can't be knocked down, but they can be slammed, and so what I'm really hoping I can do here is hit them with the mule, slam them basically out of the, of the forest and into each other, hopefully killing some of them already there, and then kind of finishing them up with the, the Toros and other mule that I have there on the other side. I probably don't want to be triggering anything with the guys on the left whatsoever, but at the same time, I won't really care, because if I'm feeding, they're really locked down. Now, I was really wondering here if I should bring in Anastasia to lock down the left zone or what, uh, but what I decided I'm going to be doing here is really kind of going for the Lore of the Feast on the right. With him having three corpses and thus three higher armor, the odds is very low, but hey, this is one of my best chances, and Magnus can feel a lot safer once Laura the Feast is off the table. So that's what I do. Uh, we just start with Anastasia. She charged in. Didn't really work out. Uh, jumping over to the mule. It didn't get a crit. I don't think I even hit, so that was all a big fail. I went in there and did my best to try and hit some things. I think I killed one Ravenger. Defense 17 high, guys. I mean, like, their defense 13 goes up to 15 because they have Surefoot, goes up to 17 because they're standing in a forest. So it's really hard to even hit them, and when they do, they might just tough and reheal, which is what you're kind of seeing there. And then when you miss them, they run away. So yeah, screw that. So otherwise, I did also was able to kill one of the guys on the left, uh, Mc, or not McBain, uh, Magnus is up there and he's feeded. I've captured most of the his list there, saying that they can't really move around. But yeah, you know, for this being a feat turn, where normally I can get into your lines and I can hit you hard and I'll really make you pay, that, it just didn't really work out this turn. Uh, one of the things that was even the worst is on the right side, I was really sure I was going to be able to get that zone. But again, I just couldn't do anything to them. I mean, I thought the one in the zone is the one I'd hit and kill with my mule. Just didn't happen. So, yeah, there you go. Now, I did set up myself so that the Toro on the right is within possible charge range of his Stalker, which has been moved so far back that I couldn't catch him in feet. To get me, he would have to get Hunter's Mark onto me. I don't really think he wants to go that far up with Iona, but we'll see what he does. And it turns out he has no problem getting into my face with Iona. Uh, really, the biggest thing that happened here is that she came up, cast the Animus of the Argus, dropping my awesome defense of 19 down to 5, which then goes up to 7. She kills me easily, then switches over to Sprint, runs away. Uh, this is actually not even going to be her feet turn. She kind of decided to really hold that, and so that she didn't have to really... I, she, I guess she wasn't really worried that I really would get to her. So, okay, you know whatever uh but yeah i she didn't really do a lot to me and so you know i should be feeling good about this but i'm not now going into this next turn feeling that i'm in a major lead you know at the point where i've had my feet and and really crashed into the lines i should be feeling like i'm either already up or after this next turn i'll be super up i'm not feeling that right now i'm feeling like i have very limited options and there's not very much I can do. So I'm going to try to keep on cleaning things up. I'm actually thinking I'm going to get a little bit janky here and put a Calamity up onto those Ravengers on the right. And I just really need that unit gone. I need to start doing work and taking his models off the table. Otherwise, I know next turn I'm going to really take a punch. So I need to try and remove as many models as possible. So that's what I do. I stick the Calamity. I also get in there, put harm on it from my own and Holt, start shooting them down, and really kill off the entire unit, all except for one model. So, fantastic. Uh, meanwhile, the mules continuing to not do work. Uh, the one on the right trying to crit slam away that stalker fails. Uh, the mule on the left tries to crit slam a bunch of the guys there on the left fails. Uh, so yeah, what are you going to really do there? To try and really push this scenario thing, I sent the one um, Toro over there to try and destroy the objective. That failed. So yeah, just, it's just a whole bunch of not good. Uh, I really am hoping here that now he'll try to run into me, not do very well, and then maybe I can counterattack tough. But, you know, I just might lose my caster here. So we'll see what happens. So this is going to be his feet turn. He did hit back pretty dang hard. Uh, he was able to destroy one 
sorry, two of my Toros, the one on the left from the Wrecking Ball, the one in the center that Iona helped with, and then the two on the right, they're kind of mucked up. Now, I do have the Tinker there that can help out, but he also had his Ambushers come in. They did some pretty good damage to my objective, and they're kind of in my way. And the Feats up. So I'm really in a lot of trouble here because things are going to be even harder to deal with. Now, Iona is right there, but the Shaman's doing the whole you can't knock me down thing. And uh, Magus is also kind of hurting. He's down to like eight boxes now because I've eaten a couple of charges. Lord of the Feast came after me. Uh, luckily, Escort and Unyielding. Hey, you know, Defense 14, Armor 21. That's pretty nice. So I survived this, but I mean, it's going to be pretty hard for me to get away to a point where I'll be safe. So that's why I was really feeling that I need to go and try and kill Iona here. So what I'm going to try and do is use my mule to go and kill the shaman so that now it can be knocked down. Nomad number three, not nomad, geez, those guys, forget them, Brian. Uh, Toro number three, will this basically move out of the way and die? I don't care about it. Uh, the Toro that's unmarked, the good painted one that I didn't paint, that one's going to be slamming the dog over Iona. And then from that point there when she's down, I should be able to go up there with Magnus and kill her. I think, I think, I think, maybe we'll find out. Um, yeah, let's just jump into how this is not good. So it really doesn't work whatsoever. The mule comes over, eats a free strike, no big deal, no, almost no damage done. I go and shoot that shaman, but I quickly realized that my math, I didn't do the math, and so the odds were extremely low. So really how this kind of works out then is that I hit it, get my first crit slam of the game, but that crit slam doesn't really matter since it can't be knocked down anyway, not taking any extra damage. And uh, yeah, with it getting plus three armor and already having a bajillion boxes, the odds of me killing it were very, very low. And well, you know, I didn't kill it. Didn't slam it far enough away so that Iona was still in the range, couldn't be knocked down. So basically at that point, I had already thrown away too many resources. And so I tried backpedaling at this point just to try and lock things down. And I mean, at this point, his clock was low. So if I was going to win in any way now, it'd be with a clock victory, but I just kind of like ran over Holt to contest and really just trying to throw things in the way. Uh, Magnus was able to kill off the Lord of the Feast, but I know I'm in a very, very bad spot. Now, I forgot to take a picture for the last turn, but basically I just die. The Wrecking Ball and the Ravengers have like a clear shot to get to me. They come over, they kill Magnus, game over, I lose. So at this point here, it'd be very easy for me to say like, ah, oh, well, there you go. I lose against Iona. She must be OP. You know, if she just keeps on beating me, uh, the internet she says she's broken. Clearly she's broken, overpowered. Uh, Privateer Plus, press, please address. Well, here's the thing, guys. I made a lot of mistakes in this game. Let's even just start with deployment. When I deployed, remember, I got to pick what side I was on and I picked an awful side. Now, I first picked it because I thought like, eh, that wall could be nice. But the biggest thing that I didn't focus on until it was too late was the forest. On the side that I gave my opponent, he had a beautiful forest that helped him contest two of the zones in a very meaningful way. Whereas the forest on the side that I took only covered one zone, was more out of the way, and wouldn't have given the same benefit. So again, if I just would have picked the other side, that would have really helped in the way I could have played this game. Secondly, when I went in there and really pushed, my big push was to try and destroy the unit that had the highest uh, defenses of, out of everything that was there. So I went after and said like, oh, you have defense 17 and can't be knocked down? Let's get you. You know, I was really kind of hoping and putting everything into that crit slam, which just did not occur. And I can say a side thing about how like maybe I got unlucky because I didn't get the crits I really wanted. But hey, that's the way that critical effects work. They're not reliable. There's nothing you should be really saying like this is my game plan. I have to get crits. So I have to make sure that when I'm doing that, I, that's not a big part of it. So instead, I should have gone against the Ravengers on the left and not the ones on the right. I mean, if anything, focus on them the turn after. And so that was a big mistake on my part. The third major mistake I made was even attempting the assassination. I should have known this. In the games I've tried before, I've tried to assassinate, and she is just so tough on that 
the turn where she feats. Super high defense, super high armor, typically can't be knocked down, typically has stealth if she needs it. Iona is very hard to assassinate, and I have to really think of this as almost like when you used to play into Doomy 3, where he popped that feat and all the beasts are basically invincible, so you go after the support instead. I just have to just take that off, saying I can't do anything meaningful to the stuff that I really want to kill, so I'll spend this turn killing the other stuff. And it's one of those things where I probably at the time I should have known better but i mean i can also say i just need to play into this matchup more to really know it because again there's not a lot of circle players here so there you have it at the end of the game he was down to two minutes so i was like oh i just would have played that last turn smarter maybe i could have clocked him but again i mean i shouldn't be going into an iona game saying i'm going for a clock victory i gotta be playing smarter and getting that attrition game going so i'm taking options and tools away from my opponent and maybe moving towards whatever win condition but i can't be saying like oh every time i play iona i'm going for time so that's just kind of a minor thing for this game so anyway folks i hope you like the idea that i came back and finally did a battle report again really hoping to do more of these and uh yeah we'll catch you again later bye